so I didn't get drafted my first year in the queue. Got picked uh, sixth round, I think, my second year. And, uh, you know, went into the camp, had a great camp, and it came down to uh, me and my best buddy, uh, Declan Smith, for the last spot. And, uh, you know, Declan was, you know, he had a great camp, was a great junior player, and uh, he was more ready for sure for junior than I was at that point. So it was uh, it was pretty tough, you know, getting uh, sent down to junior A. Uh, you know, obviously, when it comes down to you and your best buddy, it's it's pretty it's pretty hard. But, uh, you know, lucky, lucky enough we get to play together in the end. But, no, yeah, getting sent down to junior A, I remember calling my old man. He had to drive all the way up to Sydney from the Valley to pick me <laughs> up. So that was a long car ride home for sure. But, uh, yeah, and then I had a tough season, honestly. I only played, uh, I think, 25 games that whole year. Um, I came down with pneumonia. Uh, you know, oh, didn't, no. Yeah, did, probably missed a month and a half. And it was my grade 12 year of high school too, so I didn't even go to school for a month and a half. Did you go to prom? Yeah, I was able to go to prom in the end. I got back uh, just before the playoffs that year in junior a but i remember that year i scored my last goal in like december so <laughs> the next four months and went without a goal so no it was tough i was just playing xbox for a month straight in my, in my grade 12 year in my mom's basement so no it was tough for sure but uh and then uh, i remember that summer i was uh at cavendish and talking to my buddies uh that i played against and i was like yeah I don't know if I'm going to continue playing hockey and stuff because I was a good golfer at that point. Like really good? Like, yeah, I was winning like uh, provincial events across really? Nova Scotia. And, yeah, there's a lot of guys from here that went and got uh, scholarships down to the States. Dude, no idea you were that good at golf. That's yeah, so it was like I was a scratch golfer ever since I was probably 15 years old. Well, now it's a little, now it's a little rusty. You know, I had Whoa. to pay a little more attention yeah. to the hockey now. But, <laughs> you know, back then I thought about just going golf full time. And I remember telling my buddies at Cavan, just like, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to play next year and stuff. And then, uh, oh so it was, it was pretty crazy for sure. And then probably halfway through that summer, like, uh, I said this before, but like I could, I could spend the whole day in the rink, but I could never spend the whole day on the driving range. So I kind of knew right there that I should probably just stick with hockey and ended up growing a bit and, uh, you know, had a great summer, put on probably 25 pounds, grew to six one, and then, uh, made major junior, uh, the following season, and got drafted, you know, six months after that. So it was, the, it's pretty crazy. That is kind of insane. <laughs> yeah. The fact that you even had a conversation with someone, I don't care who it is, the fact that you had a conversation about quitting hockey and then for that to happen the next year, that's insane. That's yeah. like fate kind of. Yeah. That's like, that's crazy. That's that's insane. Yeah, no, it was crazy for sure to, that it came to that point looking back at it now for sure. When you cracked the roster for Cape Breton, what line were you on to start the season? You know what, I was getting healthy scratch. Uh, yeah, so probably got scratched four times in the first half of that season you know I was 18 years old so that's most guys third year in the league and I was you know getting scratched and uh you know I remember one game I there was an opportunity for me to go on you know the first line his name was uh Giovanni Fiore led the league in goals I think he had 53 goals that year I got to play with him on a line and uh just kind of clicked you know probably went only three games the rest of the year without a point uh, once I started playing with him, so you know, obviously setting him up was uh, nice, and just kind of exposed myself to the scouts that uh, you know I, that I could play, and uh, you know Ottawa took a took a chance on me in the fourth round, and uh, yeah, the rest is history, I guess. Dude, talk about taking advantage of an opportunity that was given to you, even though nothing was really given to you other than that small one game where you get to go on the first line, and then you never look back. That's crazy to think about. Yeah, it's, no, I, it's, I I remember talking to my coach. It was uh, just before the trade deadline, and, uh, you know, I didn't have a, a bad start, but I didn't have a great start and just was, wasn't was playing and still getting scratched and stuff. And I remember sitting down with them and just, uh, you know, just talking with them. And I just wanted more of an opportunity, and if it wasn't going to be here, I'd like to get traded. And he's like, well, I'll give you an opportunity uh, tomorrow night with uh, Gio. And I think I set him up for two goals or whatever. And then, and then uh, never came off that line, and we had a good playoffs. And, uh, yeah. No, it's pretty cool. So at what point does, because this would be, no, it was the next year that World Junior Buzz would come into play. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't that year. It would be the next the year. The next year, Okay, yeah. so let's talk about that summer then in between the transition of having an incredible, I guess you could technically <laughs> say your first full year in the queue yep. to your second year in the queue where you're starting to build up a little bit of a name. Talk about that summer and what you were thinking. Were you thinking World Juniors? I guess is my real question. Were you thinking World Juniors at all? Yeah, so I went to development camp, and you know that was just the you know the best thing I could ever. Okay, so imagine. you went to development. Yeah, camp. Okay. so that that summer, right after the draft, and uh, you know I went in, I was, you know kind of a no namer. I was a fourth rounder, and just just happy to be there, you know. And then 
I just kind of said to myself, you know, I'm as I'm as good as these guys, and if, you know, I put put the work, and I can, you know, potentially play pro one day. And yeah, I just had a really good development camp, and then uh, came into the season with a lot of confidence in Cape Breton. And I remember telling my uh, family members my goals to get an invite to the World Juniors, and obviously it was a long shot at that point. I only had one year of junior under my belt, but you know, that was my goal. And came out uh, the start of that season. I think I was leading the leading the queue in points for the first two or three months, and. Uh, you know, ended up getting that, uh, you know, invite to World Junior Camp. Man. Yeah. So when you get the invite, what's running through your head? Call parents, call coach, call line mate? What, what's, yeah. What are you thinking? It was kind of a crazy story. I was playing in the, the Canada-Russia series there that the Q always does. And Where uh, was it that year? It was in Charlottetown in Moncton. Nice. So it was nice. My yeah. family could come to both of the games. And that was in early November, and the World Junior starts, uh, the camp starts December 12th around that. So... Two games after the the Q uh, Canada Russia, I, I broke my finger. So I broke my finger probably end of November, and I I said there goes my shot at getting an invite because I know there was chatter and stuff like that, and they're they're watching me. But uh, you know that they, they I was I went up to Ottawa to rehab my finger, and uh, I remember being in the the trainer's office, and he got the call yeah. from the Team Canada doctor, and they asked if I was going to be able to go to the camp still. Yeah. So he said yeah. He, Drake will be ready to go. So, you know, I played probably, probably wasn't fully rehab, but, uh, you yeah. know, I'll do anything to what, put on that jersey. For 100%. Sure. What yeah. finger was it? Can I see it? It was uh, my pinky finger there. Is it the slice right there? Yeah. I think I had eight stitches. Just what? just blew up. What happened? Like you just, just blocked a shot? Just a slash. Yeah. Oh, fucker. I didn't even notice the two shifts later. My whole, uh, my whole glove was all blood. That's the thing so. when those injuries happen, you don't even notice. I got my front yeah. tooth knocked out. I didn't notice till the end of the period. I just, yeah, like I take my mouth guard out and it falls out, and I'm like, what the fuck? Happened? You know, you don't even notice. Yeah, it was just on a shot. I went to shoot, and uh, buddy got a pretty good two hander on me, and uh, yeah, it just blew up. And uh, you know, I remember being in Moncton's dressing room two weeks before for the for the Q series, and it was the same trainer that we had for the game, and he sewed me right up. And uh, yeah, I was out for I probably missed close to ten games, and didn't came back. Well, I think one game before I went to the World Junior tryout, and yeah, had a good tryout, and was able to make that team. 